Um, that is to say that when you're making something, you're emulating the creator. You have a blank page, yeah. and then there's a poem or a painting on it or a, a song that you've written. Um, just like God had this, you know, tapestry of this empty universe and created, you know, the Big Bang and all of this incredible right. wonder and beauty and, and splendor and all of the, think of all the different planets and solar systems and what must be on them. And as an artist, you're, you're emulating that act, and there's something really beautiful and, and spiritually transcendent about that. Yeah, so, so God is the creator, and whenever you create, you're imitating yes. the creator. So you're, you're entering into this like, divine flow. Of... And it's one of the gifts that God has given us, is yeah. the ability to create. Okay, so what everyone wants to know is, how is Dwight <laughs> worshiping? How, how is, like, help us to connect the dots on right. your in character, you, you, 200 plus episodes being this right. guy. How did you see that um, to take the... You have more podcast episodes than there are office episodes, by the way. I'm assuming the royalty checks I get for my advertisement <laughs> is not comparable, though. Do you have some really embarrassing advertisements on your podcast sometimes? No, I think like Podbean Dr. and all... Dr. Scholl's in, shoe inserts. No, Podbean and all in one podcast hosting publishing network. We, that's not embarrassing. I'm proud to be connected to okay, them. Okay, there you go. Especially when those nice checks plug. come in the mail. Well done. Yeah, thank well you. Done. I'm a professional. Okay, but... When you're uh, having your keys put in Jello uh, by uh-huh. Stapler. Jim Stapler, Stapler. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, whoa, wow! Like I can mess up Jesus and won't get that response. <laughs> uh, you mess up Dwight. Okay, help us connect the dots on that. Um, when that's in, in Jello and you're entertaining the world, you're making people laugh. How do you see that as worship? Well, you know, hmm, it's not quite so black and white. I think that some art is just for entertainment and is decorative and it isn't, uh, uh, it isn't as pure as it could be. So that, I want to say that, number one. Number two is um, I have a God-given ability to play weird characters that mm-hmm. are funny and strange. And uh, I love doing it and it's a lot of fun and uh, I I get to, I get to do it, and I've done it ever since I was a kid. I played just weird characters yeah. at the dinner table, so I get to do that. Number one, um, I think there is something really uh, profound about what an actor does. Actors get a bad rap, and rightfully so, because most of them are. I really want to swear in here, but I'm not going to swear. <laughs> the acoustics would make it really amazing. Yeah, but to not swear. So most most actors are complete, you know. And, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you, it, it's I'm a not be- going to say it. But I will say there is something really amazing when you see a great performance, when you see an actor transform themselves to become a character and to help tell a story, and you witness the, all of humanity uh, expressing on their face and uh, in their humor and in their physicality and in their history, and it can be really transformative and it transports you when you're watching it when yeah. it's great. So I think there's something transcendent and divine about the craft of an actor, just like the craft of a musician or a, or a poet or a dancer. Um, I think that for me, uh, the service of doing Dwight, I mean, it was just really super fun, and, and, but the service is I hear all the time from people, and now that it's kind of living on Netflix and, and everyone and their mother is watching it and re-watching it, which is fantastic... Uh, I always hear, like, you know, my brother was dying from cancer, and we would stay in the hospital bed, and we would watch the office, and we would just laugh together. And your show meant so much to me. I was going through the hardest time, and I really needed to laugh. And you hear that time and time again. Like, our family was really disunited, but we would always gather on Thursday nights, and we would watch the office together. Mm -hmm. And it was the only show that the grandma and the dad and the sons and kids could all watch at the same time. And so I think there's... Uh, I was fortunate to be a part of a really high-quality show that was able to entertain and make laugh, but also had really human characters that people related to. And it was kind of like a, it was like a wonderful dysfunctional family. Yeah. 